Hello and welcome to Soft Pepper, uh, Soft Pepper's channel. Um, my name is uh, Mr. Godfrey M. I'm an experienced uh, teacher with Cambridge International Curricula. Uh, today I'm solving mathematics paper of Cambridge Secondary Checkpoint. Uh, this is paper two of um, April 2017. Um, I encourage you uh, when you get your paper in an examination situation, uh, make sure you read all the instructions um, uh, required here. Of course, um, you're supposed to have the following calculator, geometrical instruments, and tracy paper. And um, uh, you're good to go. The paper is uh, 50 marks, uh, supposed to last uh, for only one hour. And um, before we begin, um, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscription uh, subscribe button uh, below and hit the bell icon. This way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. And that's that out of the way. Uh, Shall we begin? Question number one. Question number one. Put a ring around a larger fraction in each pair. Put a ring around a larger fraction in each pair. Of course, uh, to get to know which is the larger of the th two between uh, three quarters and um, three quarters and uh, one over ten. You can change this uh, fraction into decimals, or you can convert them into um, can convert them into fractions. I'll change uh, them into decimals. So three divided by four. Uh, this is going to be um, it's going to be uh, four divided by um, thirty divided by four. Um, goes seven times there uh, for 28. Uh, remainder two, therefore five for 20. So this is zero point um, zero point this is equivalent to zero point seven five. What about uh, seven divided by ten? So 7 divided by 10 is basically 0, sat 7, uh, 70, which will give you 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So uh, 0 0.75 is greater than 0 0.7, therefore we'll circle that, put a ring around that. Um, same thing for 5 divided by 8, this one here. 5 divided by 8, 0, 50. Um, this goes for uh, for 6. Uh, you get uh, 48. Uh, remainder 2, uh, 20. Uh, for 2, uh, 16. Remainder 4, uh, for 5. So this is uh, 0 0.625. Uh, same thing for 13 divided by 20. Uh, of course, this is zero. Uh, that uh, this uh, uh, goes how uh, many times here? For um, for six, which will give us 120. Uh, remainder 10 for 100. Uh, that goes uh, five. So this is 100. Get that. So this is a 0 0.65. So 0 0.65 is greater than 0 0.62. So the larger fraction of the two is uh, that. Then um, two thirds to divide by three, 0 0.20. Uh, this is um, a six. Uh, six for 18, 20. 6 and so on and so forth. So this is a recurring. Um, this recurring so 6, 6. 
Uh, so you can approximately say six point zero point six seven, and uh, then um, six divided by ten zero six. So this is basically six for sixty. Uh, so uh, zero point seven uh, zero point six seven is greater than zero point six. So of the two three quarters is great greater or larger fraction uh, that goes. Uh, number two, expand the brackets. Expand the brackets. Uh, basically multiply uh, what is inside in the brackets by what is outside the brackets. And um, what you're going to get here is basically 4 times t. You'll get uh, 40 minus 4 times 5 to give you 20. So, four by forty minus twenty. Uh, B is a formula. W is equals to two u plus seven. Work out the value of W when u is e is equals to nineteen. So we substitute the value of u here uh, by seventeen uh, by nineteen. So the equation becomes W. Uh, is equals to 2 times 19 plus 7. So W here will be equal to 38. 2 times 19 is 38 plus 7. 38 uh, plus 7 uh, gives us uh, 45. So W is equals to 45. Very well. Number th 3. Write the missing numbers. Write the missing numbers in the boxes to make the statement correct. Uh, fifty percent of uh, sixty. Fifty percent of sixty is equals to one over five of what is not uh, known there. So. Um, now what is 50% of 60? 50% uh, of 60 is basically 30, right? So 50% uh, basically is 50 divided by 100 of 60 because it comes the zeros. What you get is 30. So this is 30. So what number do we multiply by a third, a fifth, of course, to get uh, 30? So we write 1 over 5 uh, times, uh, let's call that number m is equals to 30. And of course, um, this will be um, 1 over 5m is equals to 30. We multiply both sides by 5. And you'll get that, of course, this 5 and this 5 will cancel find that m is equivalent to 150. You write 150 right there. Uh, the next one, 3 quarters of uh, uh, 60. Uh, 3 quarters of 60. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, 3 quarters of 60. Of course, uh, you solve this and uh, you'll find that um, uh, 60 divided by 4 is 15 and 15 times 3 will give us 45 so this is equivalent to 45 so what percentage of 50 gives us gives us uh, 45 what percentage of 50 gives us 45 so then of course we'll uh, take the percent let the percentage be x so x divide by 100 times 50 50 uh, should give us uh, 45. Okay, so uh, we can cancel that 0 and that 0. So here we have 5x over 10 is equals to 45. Uh, we can multiply both sides by 10. Multiply both sides by 10. Uh, we get 5x is equals to 450. Divide both sides by 5. Right. Therefore, x 
is going to be 90. So 90% uh, of 50 is 45. And, uh, there we go. It's great uh, you're watching this video, uh, but I've always insisted that um, you need to do these questions by yourself. You need uh, to practice. Of course, when you practice, you'll become uh, perfect in solving these kind of questions. And um, you are um, you're able to get this same paper uh, so that you may practice with me. Uh, you may get this same paper I am solving right now. Uh, from this wonderful site, uh, solved papers, one word, solvedpapers.co.uk. Um, you can visit this site and uh, you'll be able to get this same paper that I'm solving and um, uh, practice. I can give you, um, can show you the site I'm referring to. Uh, this is the site I'm talking about, solved papers. Uh, it's a site that is full of resources. Uh, give it a give it a try. Uh, we are dealing with uh, checkpoint secondary. Uh, of course, there are other subjects that you can also uh, look at. We are in mathematics, so you go to past papers secondary checkpoint. Um, you'll find uh, there are check uh, checkpoint uh, secondary one mathematics. There. Are, Papers started from all the way 2016 uh, to 29, uh, 2019, both October and April. Uh, the paper that I'm dealing with right now is um, 2017 um, April uh, paper 2. I'm dealing with this paper right here. Uh, all these papers you can get them uh, from uh, this site and do as much practice as you can. Uh, that will make you uh, ready as you sit for your checkpoint. Don't take anything for chance. If you want to get outstanding grades, uh, go a second mile. Uh, of course, you can get all these papers by clicking here. Click here, uh, get all soft uh, soft in zip folder, all the soft and unsolved. Uh, of course, you can get them from uh, here. Uh, this is the zip folder that is being talked about. You can choose to get all uh, in 2019. Uh, of course, you'll get at a discount. Of course, for April, 2019, April, October, 2018, April, October, 2017, April, October, 2016, likewise, April, October. Or if you choose to get um, uh, for each um, uh, session, October or April, uh, you'll find that uh, you can get for mathematics, uh, sciences, and English. Of course, the price is fair. Uh, spend a little and... Uh, uh, prepare yourself for the, your examinations and um, you will get grades that you'll be happy with. Uh, you can ask your parents to help you with this, uh, to get for you this kind of papers. And uh, once you get them, uh, make sure you watch the video that I'm making and um, practice solving the questions uh, yourself. Uh, that out of the way, we can go now to question number four. You can solve question number four. Um, rectangles A and B are identical. Identical means uh, got the same uh, area. Each has a diameter of uh, 40 centimeters. Sorry, each has got a perimeter of 40 centimeters. They are put together to make a new rectangle. Of course, you can see it right there. The perimeter of the new rectangle is 68. Uh, centimeters. Work out the length and the width of rectangle A. Work out the length and the width of rectangle A. Of course, a perimeter, when you talk about perimeter, is the distance across. Uh, if I give the length, the width to be x, and of course, um, we are told that each has a perimeter of 40 uh, centimeters. Okay, I give this one to be um, x, then I um, can call this one 20 minus x, uh, this one is 20 minus x, uh, this is 
x okay this is x this will be 20 minus x and this likewise will be 20 minus x um, there we are so then uh, we can work out uh, this uh, by um, adding all the sides and all the sides of the two rectangles should uh, sum up to uh, 68 the perimeter when the two triangles are uh, rectangles are joined up they'll sum up to 68 therefore um, these two this x and this x makes 2x so I can write 2x right there plus I have 1 2 3 4 20 minus x so get 4 20 minus x and this gives uh, me 40 uh, 68 okay now we can solve this um, by opening the brackets so we have 2x plus 80 minus 4x uh, will give us 68 uh, collect the like terms together 2x minus 2 uh, minus 4x this will give um, 8x minus 2x uh, we have 68 there uh, of course you can uh, add both sides uh, take make this x positive it's negative here so you can take it the other side you can take this one on the other side you add both sides bring it here and then you bring this one on the other side you minus so what you have here is 80 minus 68 is equals to 2x um, 80 minus 68 will give you 12 uh, is equals to 2x divided both sides by 2 uh, basically means x is equals to uh, 6 so if x is equals to 6 then what is the length right length is um, 2x minus uh, 20 minus length is equals to 20 we are supposed to get the length of rectangle a 20 minus uh, 6 or 20 minus x and we have found that x is 6 so 20 minus 6, 6 this gives us 14 so the length of triangle a is 14 uh, width um, is equals to x and x is equals to 6 so our width is 6 very well yeah <clears throat> if you had considered uh, each one of these triangle long assuming this is triangle uh, sorry um, rectangle a uh, then uh, the sides of rectangle a is um, given here um, assuming that is uh, the we are told the uh, perimeter of uh, rectangle a is 40 and therefore we can take the sides the width to be x uh, the size to be 20 minus x of course uh, the length and therefore if you add the length plus the width uh, you should get uh, uh, 40 that's why we used uh, the length here of this rectangle a and b to be 20 minus x question number five uh, a country has a total area of uh, 40 0.8 million hectares 28.4 million hectares are covered with forest I work out the work out the percentage of the total area that is covered with forest give your answer to one decimal point of course the total area is 40.8 uh, covered by forest is uh, 28.4 so the percentage will be 28.4 of the total area 40.8 uh, times 100 and this uh, when you do your correct mathematics you find is 69.6 percent to one decimal point so the percentage is 69.6 question six Sophia is at a restaurant she wants to share the one um, she wants to share two forty-six uh, dollar bill equally 
between seven people. She uses a calculator to work out how to share uh, the bill. Okay. Um, one. Each person should pay their own price, their own bill. Sophia says everybody needs to pay $35.14 uh, tick to show if Sophia is correct. Um, of course, you need to divide 2 46 by 7 and as you can see here, the division uh, is uh, 35 um, 35.142857 when you divide 4, 46, 2, 46 by 7 and therefore if each one pays um, 35.14 what would be the total amount paid? you can find out that by multiply 35.14 multiplied by 7 this is 8 uh, carry 2, 28, um, 7 times 4 is 28, so 8 carry 2, 7, this will be 9, point, um, this is uh, 7 times 5 is 35, carry 3, uh, this is going to uh, give us 3 times 7 is 21, 21 plus uh, 3 gives us uh, 24 dollars, and you, as you can see, um she's their come is short of uh, uh two cents uh when you take two forty six um minus two forty five point nine eight so this is two zero um zero so they are fully short with uh two cents of uh the amount so uh tick to show if Sophia is correct so Sophia is not correct by say that uh, each person needs to pay 35.14 uh, dollars unless she wants to do uh, to add the two cents so we have to explain this by looking at what you had calculated there so um if everybody or if everyone if everyone a uh, pace um, that is thirty five point one four uh the total will be two cents less two cents less or short two cents. Uh, shot. So Sophia is not right. Number seven. Chen uh, shares $165 between three friends. The ratio he uses is Blessy 1, Carlos 4, Gabriela uh, 6. Work out how much Carlos receives. Uh, to work out how much Carlos uh, receives, you have to get the sum of the to uh, the the sum of the ratios. Uh, one plus four plus six. This will give us eleven. And therefore, the fraction for Carlos of uh, one sixty-five dollars will be four. Carlos is getting uh, the ratio of four over eleven times one sixty-five, and um, of course, when you divide uh, eleven. 165 by 11, you get 15. Uh, this will give us 15. And 15 times 4 gives us uh, 60. So Carlos gets $60. There we go. Question number 8. Yuri is investigating the hypothesis. Uh, girls are more likely to play a musical instrument than boys. He collects data uh, from 40 boys and 80 girls, he finds that altogether 91 of the people asked to play 
uh, a musical instrument. Uh, repeat that again. All together, 91 of the people asks, play a musical instrument. Uh, 20 of the girls do not play a musical instrument. Right? Um, complete the table using this information. Um, we have boys, girls, and uh, Toto here. Yeah? So, play a musical instrument. Uh, Toto is we are told 9 to 1 plays a musical instrument. Out of all these people, 40 plus 80 is 120. So, out of 120, 91 plays a musical instrument. So, plays a musical instrument is 91. Um, we are told that do not play a musical instrument. We are told that 20 girls do not play a musical instrument. So we have uh, 20 there. Um, therefore, uh, we need to work out um, this. Um, we we know that um, girls are 80. Therefore, what is the value here? So 80 minus 20, this will give us 60. Therefore, uh, 60 goes there. And um, we know that the sum of boys that plays the musical instrument plus the sum of girls that plays the musical instrument should give us 90. So to get uh, the number of boys that play a musical instrument, I uh, will get 90 minus 60. Sorry, this is 91 minus 60. So this is uh, 1, 3. So 31 boys are uh, playing a musical instrument. Then uh, do not play a musical instrument. Of course, the sum of boys is 40. 31 plays musical instrument. So basically means 9 do not play a uh, musical instrument. 9 do not play musical instrument. And therefore, uh, the total of those who do not play musical instruments is 9 plus 20. Give us 29. Okay. Uh, B. Complete the sentences. Uh, the percentage of girls who play a mus uh, play an instrument is, of course, you need to calculate that percentage of girls uh, which play a musical instrument. Uh, so percentage of girls is um, uh, sixty play sixty girls play musical instruments out of eighty. So the percentage is sixty over eighty uh, over hundred, and then of course when you calculate this nicely. Um, you can solve this and this uh, by 4 uh, sorry by 4 here is 2 by 4 is 15 uh, 2 uh, divided by 10 gives us 5 and uh, what do we get? 75% so 75% of girls play a musical instrument percentage of boys who play an instrument uh, 31 boy, uh, the 20 boys play instrument out of 40. So likewise, 31 of 40 uh, times 100. When you do the mathematics correct, you'll get 77.5%. So 77.5% uh, of boys play musical instrument. Um, we are told tick. I'll put a tick to show if the data supports Yuri's hypothesis. What was Yuri's hypothesis? Yuri had suggested that girls are more likely to play a musical instrument than boys. What Yuri's uh, hypothesis says here is that the percentage of girls play a musical instrument is greater than the percentage of boys play a musical instrument. What does the data say? It says that the percentage of boys play musical instrument is greater than the percentage of girls play musical instrument. And uh, for that reason, uh, then uh, Yuri is not, uh, Yuri's hypothesis is not correct. Question number nine. Show that uh, the cube root of 46 is less than um, the square root of 12.9 okay um, you can use your calculator to get this at uh, the cube root of 46 you'll find it is uh, 
0.583. Uh, square root of 2.9, uh, you'll find it is uh, 3.592. And therefore, um, the square root is greater than the cube root. You can see that 3.592 is greater than uh, 3.5. Eight, three, and therefore uh, you can say the square root of two twelve point nine is greater than the cube root of forty six. Right. So basically, uh, the we have shown that um, the cube root is less than the square roots. Uh, that's why you can also write it this way. You can also write. Um, if this uh, perhaps brings confusion, you can also write um, the cube root of 46 is less than the square root of 12.9. Same thing. These two statements are equivalent. Number 10. Uh, the cost of posterior parcel depends on its mass. Depends on its mass. Ma mass of a parcel and the cost. As the mass increases, uh, the cost uh, likewise increases. Uh, Mike posts seven bars of chocolate in a parcel. Each bar has a mass of 0 0.14 uh, kilogram. The total mass of the package is 95 grams. Work out how much it will cost Mike to post this parcel. You must show how you worked out your answer. You must show. Okay, very well, uh, let's show, okay, um, we have uh, seven bars of chocolate, each bar is got a mass of uh, 0 0.14 uh, grams, and um, when you multiply out um, uh, this, okay, um, you're going to get... Um, to get uh, let's say uh, there is a 0 0.98 uh, kilograms seven bars of chocolate each 0 0.14 uh, kilograms will be a total of 0 0.98 kilograms uh, we are told the total mass total mass of the packaging Without the bar, uh, without the bar chocolates, uh, is 95. So we need to get uh, the total mass, uh, total mass, uh, chocolate plus uh, the packaging will be 95 plus 0 0.98. Uh, this will give us um, a total of uh, sorry, um, I misread this. Uh, this is 95 grams. 95 grams. So uh, this is 95 grams. So we change this one into kilograms. Uh, 95 grams in kilograms. This would be 0 0.095 kilograms. So the total mass will be 0 0.095 uh, plus um 0 0.98 of course when you add this up uh, you're going to get five seven uh, zero one kilogram and therefore um, we can now look at the uh, masses um, you can see it is falling around here so one kilogram up to two kilogram is going to be four uh, point seven dollars so um, um one kilogram um, is less than one point zero seven five which is less than uh two kilogram and therefore our cost is equals to uh four point seven dollars four point seven dollars will be the cost right there. 
Question number 11. A biased uh, spinner has six uh, sites. This spinner is biased, right? Um, it's not evenly, uh, the weight is not evenly distributed. Uh, so the spinner has got six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. The table shows the probabilities of some of the outcomes. All the outcomes do not have the same probabilities. Um, the remaining the remaining probabilities sorry the remaining th probabilities of the three outcomes are equally likely we have got the same probability that is what we are being told work out the probability that the spinner lands on five okay so uh, to do that we must find uh, what is the probability of landing on three what is the probability of landing on five what is the probability of landing on six and uh, three probability of three five and six are equally uh, likely therefore we know that probability totals to um to one so assuming this is x because they are equally likely they are equal so we have uh, 3x plus uh, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.28 this should total to 1 okay so then of course when you add 0 0.3 plus uh, 0 0.15 that gives you 0 0.45 uh, 0 0.45 uh, plus uh, 0 0.28 uh, this gives us 3 uh, sorry 2 uh, 2 right there um carry one six seven so uh we have two uh sorry three x plus zero point seven two they should give us one and therefore um uh three x is equals to the minus zero point uh seven two both sides one minus zero point seven two and they should give us um, 1 minus that should give us 0 0.28 uh, uh, therefore x you divide both sides by 3 will be 0 0.09 uh, that basically means this is 0 0.09 0 0.09 Okay, uh, 0 0.09, likewise 0 0.09. And therefore, the probability that the spinner lands on a 5 is 0 0.09. Question 12. Question 12. An adult uh, lion is 1.21 meters uh, tall right a baby lion is uh, 55 uh, centimeters tall write the ratio of the height of the adult uh, lion to the height of the baby lion give your answer in its simplest form right so you find the ratio of 1 to 1 and um course we can change uh, this 55 centimeters into meters uh, this will be 0 0.55 meters so 0 0.55 the ratio is 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.55 therefore uh, you can see there of course there's two decimal places you can multiply each by 100 when you multiply it uh, 0. Point, I mean 1.2 one times a hundred to make them whole numbers uh, you get 121 you multiply 0 0.55 by 100 you get 55 so uh, this is 121 into 55 and um, you can see you can divide 121 by 11 
uh, when you divide 121 by 11, you get 11. When you divide 55 by 11, you get 5. And therefore, that is the simplest form. You cannot divide 11 uh, any further, uh, same as 5. So the ratio is uh, 11 to 5. The ratio of adult lions, you start with the adult lions, and then you follow with the baby uh, lion right there. Here is question uh, 13. Um, calculate the value of this expression when x is minus 3. Uh, to do that, we must um, expand uh, this expression by opening the brackets. Uh, x plus 5 uh, into brackets x minus 4. x minus 4. So we open the brackets, we multiply everything on the second bracket by x first. So x times x gives us x squared minus, we have a minus here, x times minus 4 gives us 4x. Uh, 5 times x gives us plus 5x. Uh, 5 times minus 4 gives us minus 20. <coughs> we Collect the like terms together. We have 4x here and 5x here. So this will become 2x squared. 4x plus 5x gives us plus x minus 20. Now we are told x is minus 3. So we substitute everything here minus 3. Minus 3 squared plus minus 3 minus 20. Okay. Um, minus 3 squared gives us 9. Of course, you know that uh, minus 3 times minus 3 gives us a positive 9. So this will be 9. Um, minus 3 and positive gives us negative. Uh, minus 3, then minus 20. Uh, of course, um, here will be 9. 3 and 20 will give us minus 23. And um, uh, minus 23, uh, right there. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, this will give us minus 14. So our answer here is minus 14. You can also do it in a simple way. Instead of expanding like I have done, you can also substitute the value of um, minus x straight. You can basically say, um, you can basically say, uh, you can substitute this uh, minus 3 into x here. So you can say minus 3 plus 5 into brackets, uh, into brackets uh, minus 3 minus 4. Right? Of course, uh, minus 3 plus minus I mean plus five this gives us two uh, and then times minus three minus four is minus seven and this will give us again minus fourteen what we got in there. Whichever way is easier for you, go for that. Part B this expression is equals to two eighty six. Use trial and improvement to find the positive solutions of this question. Show your trials in a table. You may not ex you may not need all the rows. One value has been done for you. Uh, the value done for us is right there. Okay. Um, we have 10. Uh, let's go to 15. Uh, 15 is going to uh, if x is 15, then we'll have 15 plus 5 to brackets, uh, 15 minus 4. Uh, 15 plus 5 will give us 20 times 11. And 20 times 11 will give us 220. Now 220 is slightly less than 286. 
uh, then we go to 20. Uh, so we substitute the value of x is 20 plus 5 into brackets into brackets 20 minus 4. Um, 20 plus 5 gives us 25 times 20 minus 4 is 16. 25 times 16 will give us 400. Um, that is way greater than what we need, uh, 286. So we can reduce that to, let's say, 17. And therefore, we will have 17 times 5 into brackets. We substitute the value of x here by 17. 17 minus 4. Uh, sorry, it's 17 plus 5. So 17 plus 5 gives us 22. Uh, 22, 7, 17 minus 4 gives us 13. And this will total to 286. And uh, there we are. We have found that x um, by trial and um, improvement, we have found that x is 17. C expand and simplify. Let us expand. Of course, uh, x plus 5 into brackets, x minus 4. We multiply everything by this x, so x times x will give us x squared. Uh, x times minus 4 will give us 4x. 5 times x gives us 5x. We have already done this one earlier on, so that is 20. We collect the like terms together, so x squared, um, x squared plus x minus 20. That is the expansion, so x squared plus x minus 20. Question number 14. A car travels... Uh, uh, 240 kilometers in three and three hours and three uh, three um, and three quarters of an hour of course three and th uh, three quarters hours calculate the average speed of the car of course you know that speed average speed is total distance traveled over total time taken of course um, you find how many hours are this um, because this is going to be 4 times um, 3, 12, plus 3. That gives us uh, 15 over 4 hours. Of course, and therefore, the total distance is 240 um, kilometers. Divide by 15 over 4 hours. Of course, you are free to multiply. To bring uh, 4 on top there over 15. Okay. When you do multiplication right, therefore, when you do the multiplication, you're going to get uh, the answer to be 64 kilometers per hour. So the answer is 64. Number 15. Here are the times in seconds that seven adults uh, take to run a race. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Asan calculates the mean. He writes, the mean is this uh, number of seconds. Write a statement about the accuracy that Asan uses in recording the answer. Um, Asan has given so many decimal places, uh, but we can see the um, timings were only to one decimal place. So he should have rounded his answer um, because the timings are given to only one decimal place. Um, the calculated mean cannot be more accurate than the timing. So he should have he should have rounded off 
he should have rounded off, rounded his answer. Should have rounded his answer. Rounded his answer to one decimal less. Um, reason the times are uh, times are given to one decimal place. That's more plus. So not rounding off uh, this calculated mean to one decimal place, it means that the mean is more accurate than the time in which are the number uh, the more uh, the more decimal places uh, implies more accurate the more the accuracy and that is not the case since he's getting his mean from uh, the timings that uh, to one decimal place uh, B write his answer to a more suitable degree of accuracy so you round it off to you round this one off to one decimal place you can see uh, the second decimal place here is four four is less than five so you cannot round it up so you will get 43.8 uh, as the uh, acceptable degree of accuracy okay that's uh, number 15 here's number 16 Anastasia owns a cafe she records the number of hot drinks and the number of cold drinks she sells on each of 10 days because this is a register this is a hot and these are cold drinks the data uh, the data for the first six days has been plotted on the scatter graph. Scatter graph is what you're seeing right down here. Uh, of course, we have the number of drinks, number of cold drinks, and number of uh, hot drinks. Um, what is the question here? Complete the scatter graph by plotting for the remaining four days okay for the six days up to where it is shaded right and therefore uh, you can basically look at what uh, she's plotting um, you can see there's a scatter uh, 97 and 64 you can find where that is um, you have uh, 97 is right here for the hot drinks and um, of course 97 is somewhere here uh, 97 the graph is uh, 1 2 3 4 5 each one of these div small divisions here is 2 so this is 2 4 6 7 and then on the x-axis is same so 62 64 so right there Right, for day 7, we have hot drinks are 60 and cold drinks are 80. So that's easy to get. Hot drinks are 60 and cold drinks are 80. So I'll put an X right there. On day 8, uh, sorry, this is uh, 6, 7, Eight nine okay ten so on, on day eight hot drinks were sixty eight uh cold drinks were seventy two uh go back to the graph hot drinks sixty eight so two four six eight right here okay right here sixty eight and uh seventy six so um 70 is there, so 70, 70 is there, so 72, 74, 76. So our um, plot it should be right there. Then on day 9, on day 9, hot uh, number of hot drinks was 64, number of cold drinks was, sorry, number of uh, hot drinks was 84, number of cold drinks was 65. So 84, 65. Hot drinks, 
84. It's right there. Code rings is 65. So uh, 2, 4, 65 is in between there. Okay. Then on day 10, hot drinks were 74. 82 for the cold drinks. So 74 is here. This point. And 82 is right there. Very good. We've gotten our scatter um, graph plotted. Uh, question number part B. State the type of correlation shown on the scatter graph. What is the correlation uh, shown here? Uh, you can see uh, the graph is um, kind of sliding in this direction. And when it slides in that direction, uh, we usually call that a negative correlation. And uh, what we write here is negative is a negative correlation. Very good. Question number 17. The nth uh, term of a sequence 2n raised to power 2 plus 3. The nth term of a sequence is 2n squared plus 3. Work out the first three terms. The first three terms of this sequence. Of course, um, when n is equals to 1, then uh, to go to be 2, 1 squared, plus 3. Of course, this will give us 2, plus 3, give us 5. So the first term would be 5. When n is equals to 2, uh, we substitute the value of n here is 2 squared, plus 3. So this will be... Um, 4, 2 squared is 4 times 2, which would be 8, plus 3. And uh, what we do get here is 11. When n is equals to 3, the first three terms, of course, we'll have substitution of n by 3 squared plus 3. So 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 gives us 18, plus 3. And this will give us 21. So the first three terms is 5, 11, uh, 21. Okay. Number 18. The diagram shows a right-angled uh, tr triangle. It has a base of x centimeters. The height is x minus 2 centimeters, as you can see uh, right there. Write down an expression for the area of the triangle. We know that the area of a triangle is equals to... Uh, area, sorry, uh, area is equals to a half uh, banes times height, uh, therefore a half, the banes is x times x uh, times x, and the height is x minus 2, right? This will reduce to uh, half x plus um, x minus 2. Okay, so um, this is 2. This is 2. So a half plus x. A half plus x. Um, I mean half x. Um, no, 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 I'm wrong. I'm wrong. This is a half half x. This is multiplication, and this is multiplication. So, um, the bracket. So a half a half. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a half x into x minus 2. So this will be um, a half x squared minus a half, uh, sorry, minus um, 
uh, minus x, right? Because when you multiply half x times 2, this will give us x, so minus x. And this uh, can be uh, written as, um, um, this can be written as x squared minus 2x over 2. So x squared minus 2x over 2. Or you can even write it as half x, half x squared minus x. Both are correct. Number 19. Rajiv buys a book for $2.5. He says the book at $4.29. What is his percentage profit? What is Rajiv's percentage profit? Um, what is the, his profit? Of course, to get the profit, uh, you need to uh, find the difference between the selling price and the buy price. So uh, this is 2.50. So the profit is, um, of course, uh, this is 7.3 minus 2, 1. The profit is um, $1.79. That is uh, his profit. Therefore, um, what is the um, what is the profit percentage profit? Um, we know that um, two point five. This is equivalent to hundred. Then one point seven nine should be what? Which should be give us the profit? So we cross multiply. So it's one point seven nine times hundred over two point five or you can just say uh, 1.79 of 2.5 times 100 still be the same thing. So when you do it um, that way, uh, you'll get a um, value of 71.6%. So you meant a profit of 71.6%, um, which is a good profit for any businessman. We are at question number 20 now. Um, 20a, a point lies on the line 3x, uh, 3x plus 2y, which is uh, equal to 12. The coordinates of the point, the x coordinate of the point is 1. Work out the y coordinate. So if x is equal to 1, right, then um, 3, uh, we substitute the value of x, which is 1 right there plus 2y is equals to 12. And therefore, we'll have 3 plus 2y is 12. And therefore, we minus 3 both sides. Get 2y is equals to 12 minus 3, uh, which gives us 9. Therefore, uh, 2y is equals to 9. Divide both sides by 2. Uh, therefore, y, the coordinate of y is Four and a half. Four and a half. Work uh, part B. Work out the coordinates of the point where line three x plus two y is equals to uh, twelve crosses the x axis. Um, when this line crosses the x axis, I um, we say that x is equals to uh, sorry y is equals to zero. At the point where the line crosses this x-axis, y is 0. Therefore, this equation, 3x plus 2, since y is 0, you put 0 there, is equals to 12. And anything you multiply by 0 is 0. So this equation reduces to uh, 3x is equals to 12. Divide both sides by 3. So x is equals to 4. And therefore, uh, the, co the x coordinate is 4, while the y coordinate is 0. Very well. Part C. Draw a graph of uh, 3x plus 2 is equal to 12. We have said that when x, when y is 0, uh, when y is 0, from here, when y is 0, 
x is equals to 4. So you can plot that graph, that point uh, here. When y is 0, x is equals to 4. Uh, that is the coordinate uh, right there. And we had also found out when x was um, 1, y was 4.5. So you come down here. When x is 1, y is 4.5. In between there then you use a ruler and join those two uh, points um, I'm going to do it freehand but you should use a ruler join these two points and this line is 3x plus 2y equals to 12 you use a ruler to do that Question uh, 21, complete the table to show the sum of the interior angles for different polygons. Uh, number of sides of polygon is 5, uh, sum of the interior angles is four, uh, 540. Um, when the angle is, when the sum of the angles is 720, how many, uh, what are the number of uh, polygons uh, right here? Uh, you go uh, this way, uh, 720 uh, divided by 180 um, is equals to n minus uh, 2. And therefore, 720 divided by 80, 180 is 4. And therefore, 4 is equals to n minus 2. And therefore, n is equals to... Uh, you add uh, minus 2 both sides and it's going to be 6 and uh, that's what you write here 6 and of course when the polygon is got 9 sides what is the sum of the interior angles uh, right there so uh, go 9 minus 2 times 180 uh, this should give us 1000 260. Of course, this should be 7 uh, times 180. Should give us that 1260. Question 22. Pierre walks 24 kilometers due north, then 7 kilometers due east. Calculate how far he is from his standing, uh, from his uh, starting point. Uh, of course, if you have a compass here, this is north, and we are told it walks 20 kilometers, 24 kilometers north, right? It walks 24 kilometers north, this is 24 kilometers, uh, sorry, uh, 24 kilometers north, then it goes east, uh, some 7 kilometers, then we are asked to find um we are asked to find um how far he is from the starting point uh a is starting point and uh c is is a uh, finish point and of course you can see this is the right angle triangle so this is the hypotenuse to get the hypotenuse you use the pythagoras theorem uh let me call this one um x Therefore, uh, to get what is x, we say x squared is equals to 24 squared plus 7 squared. Of course, 24 squared uh, is 576. You can do long mathematics or you can use your calculator. Um, plus 7 squared is 49. So this is x squared. All right. So x squared is equals to the sum of those, which will give us 625. And to find x, uh, we get the square root of both sides, square root of x, square root of this. So the square root of 625 is 25. You should memorize this, uh, square roots. So the distance 
um, between the starting point and this new position uh, is 25 kilometers. Uh, question 23, the diagram shows a garden ABCD. A, B, C, D. There. Because we are told the shaded area is covered with grass. Or this area which is shaded is covered with grass. The area covered with grass is formed from two semicircles and a rectangle. This is semicircle. And this is the rectangle right there. Okay. Uh, calculate the area covered with grass. Calculate the area covered with grass. Um, in that case, you need to subdivide um, this in, call this one A, call this area B, call this area C. So you find the area of A first, you find the area of each. Uh, you're given some measurements here. Yeah? So this 2.5 basically means it is the radius of this uh, semicircle. So uh, area of A, uh, area of A is equals to um, pi r squared, but a half, a half since it is a half of a circle, uh, pi uh, times r squared, 2.5 squared. When you do calculation, you'll get 9.82 meters squared. The unit is meters. Go again to area of B. B is a rectangle. Uh, you can see the distance from D to A is 9 meters. Uh, the radius for A is 2.5. The radius for uh, C is 3. 2.5 plus 3 gives us, um, gives us uh, 5.5. Uh, this side will be 9 minus 5.5 uh, which should give us uh, uh, which should give us uh, what is it giving us uh, should give us um, mm -hmm, let me see uh, 3.5 because 2 plus that is 5.5 so this should give us 3.5 therefore of course the other side of B here is 6 meters. Of course, this other side is 3.5. This distance here, 2.5 plus 3 minus 9. Because the distance from D to A uh, is that we're looking for this distance from here uh, to here. So the distance uh, is uh, 3.9. Therefore, our area for B is 6 times 3.5 6 times 3.5 um, that gives us uh, 21 meters squared uh, we go for area of C which is some semicycle uh, same circle here it has got a radius of uh, 3 so take a half of this uh, multiply by 3 squared multiply by 3 squared, what you're going to get is 14.4 meters squared. Then you add all of this, 9.81 plus 21, get 1803 plus 14.14. When you do that, uh, what do you get? This is 2, sorry. This is 2, so we have 2 there. So this is going to be 6. It's going to be 9. It's going to be 4 and 4. So the area covered with grass is 44.96 meters uh, squared. That is what you write here, 44.96 meters squared. Okay. You can follow the calculations uh, up here. Uh, that will be quite okay. Question 24. Diagram shows a quadrilateral. 
because that teaches us a class to show how the quadrilateral tessellates, uh, tessellates um, the work of two students is shown, uh, Mia's work and Lily's work uh, right there. Lily has shown a tessellation of the quadrilateral. Explain why Mia has not shown tessellation of a quadrilateral. The word tessellation um, basically means uh, arrangement of arrangement of shapes, arrangement of shapes are uh, fitted together, shapes fitted together. And of course you can see Lily's uh, shapes are fitting together uh, while Mia's they are not fitting, there are gaps uh, in between the shapes. Therefore the explanation here why Mia's um, uh, range work is not uh, tessellated, uh, you say there are gaps, there are gaps, they are not fitting. So there are gaps, tessellation I've said means uh, shapes fitting together. So in Mia's case, uh, there are gaps, uh, there are gaps uh, in Mia's work. In Mia's work. So they are not tessellated very well. That brings us to the end of uh, this paper. Uh, thank you for keeping uh, with me. I hope you uh, found it useful. And I uh, hope to see you in my next video. Cheers.